Addiction Podcast, a podcast where we go one-on-one with fiction creators, such as authors, filmmakers, actors, songwriters, and more. Each episode, we get the inside scoop on our guests' creative process, the ups and downs of their industries, and our guests also give out tips and tricks that help them become successful. And now, let's jump into the episode with your host, Chris C.L. Lowry. All right, all right, all right. Welcome back to the Fiction Addiction Podcast. My next guest is a two-time award-winning, best-selling author of both fiction and nonfiction books. She is a sought-after speaker, pastor, coach, and literary strategist. Her mission is to help women find hope through transformation, restoration, and reclaiming their lives through workshops, conferences, and seminars. As a book coach, she helps authors and aspiring authors grow their book business by providing marketing strategies, tools, resources, and opportunities to help them succeed in the literary world. Her literary works have been spotlighted in a growing number of publications, including CBN, Real Life, Real Faith Magazine, The Sacramento Observer, and Black Pearls Magazine. She has also appeared on numerous local and online radio shows and is the owner of Right Now Literary Book Tours, which is an online service to help promote authors. Ladies and gentlemen, Paulette Harper, what is going on? Well, hello there. I'm so honored to be on and on tonight to talk to your listeners. I'm doing well. How are you? Good. I'm good. I'm good. We are happy to have you. So Let's talk about this writing journey of yours. Um, When did it begin? Okay. Yeah, I started writing in 2008, and um, I wrote my first book coming out of a divorce. I was married to a pastor for 23 years, and I started to journal my process of going through this um, dark season in my life of, of going through this divorce. And through that, I started to realize that I still had a purpose in life. There was still something that, you know, God wanted me to, to do. And as I began to journal, I realized that I had a voice and my voice needed to be heard. And even though I was going through some really tough trials and testings and, and, um, situations and circumstances, I was still, um, God still wanted to do something in my life. And so I started writing and wrote my first book that was then This Is Now, This Broken Vessel Restored. And that really opened up the door for me to be able to write other stories and write other mm-hmm. books that also helped other women who were also going through transformation, women who were going through changes in their own ministry and who were also going through divorce and any any kind of losses as well. Now. How much did writing play into um, your therapy going through such a hard time? Oh, my goodness. Yeah, it was so therapeutic for me because um, as I began to write, I began to, of course, reflect. And and then, you know, my mind had to go back to some of those places that brought me pain and some of those mm-hmm. moments that I had to really, you know, uh, have breakthroughs in. But being able to write um, gave me such the power, uh, such a great power to um, and a will to want to live, to want to move forward. And so because it was healing for me to write my story and then to read it and reflect on where I was at the current moment, um, reflecting on where I had came from, it, it, it was liberating. It really was because I could share and I could tell my own personal journey that I, um, it was my truth it was my story, and I wanted to be the author of it. Now, how how much did that play in a part in terms of um, willingness to share the story? You know what I mean? Because because it's so deep, it, it, um, obviously that bring that will bring you to a vulnerable state. What was the process and the, the thought process behind 
whether to share it and um, how did you get to that point where you knew you were ready to share your story? Yeah, you're absolutely right, because that was a, 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 a time where I was very vulnerable because I was going to expose myself and then also others that had been part of my life and part of my journey for, you know, all those 23 years and more. And so I really had to take assessment and try to write my story that it was really focused in on me and my own my own journey and my own struggles and my own battles and my own victories eventually. And so I had to um, think about how I was going to incorporate certain scenes or certain moments and certain memories that really didn't, you know, necessarily point to the person that caused me the affliction. And mm. so um, I really needed to uh, write it in a way that um, I wasn't um, in implying or, in, you know, uh, allowing other people to formulate their ideas saying, oh yeah, that's him, that's him, that's him. Oh yeah, that's him. I didn't do that. I wanted to make sure that it was all about me and my journey. And um, I remember one, one reader picked up a copy of my book and she was, um, she was actually kind of disappointed because she said, I thought you was going to write something real juicy about, you know, what had <laughs> happened in your life. You know, you was a pastor's wife and whatnot. I said, no, I said, I'm a woman of integrity and I don't need to do that to prove, to prove a point. This is about my journey. This is about what I went through. This was about my own struggles uh, going through that. And I just wanted to I just wanted the readers to know my my story, what was my truth and how I was, you know, maneuvering through life without being married to a pastor. Right. So once you got that story out, um, how did you know it was time for the next to start working on the next story and start building that writer's career? Well, you know, when I um, when I started writing my first book, I had no author friends. I didn't know anything about writing. And so I was this brand new author just learning how to how to publish a book. And so um, after I wrote my first book, I, you know, I began to well, even in the middle part of, you know, writing that first book, I began to reach out to other authors. I began to connect with other people, you know, who had, you know, written, you know, uh, exp uh, inspirational stories, nonfiction stories. And I started to gleam after them. I started to um, learn from them and, and how this publishing industry worked, you know, what to do, the do's and the don'ts of, of publishing a book and whatnot. And so I surrounded myself with uh, people who knew more than me, uh, mm -hmm. you know, and people who could make deposit in me and I could, you know, uh, just soak in all of their gifts and talents and, and skill set and knowledge to be um, a good writer. And so once I um, finished that first book, um, I started writing my second book, which is entitled Completely Whole. And um, it, it was amazing how once I opened up, um, you know, my heart to say yes to the first book, because I was, it was all about exposing Paulette. And so once I said yes to the first book, you know, my second book came and words just started to just formulate. And I began on this process of this becoming, you know, this, this published author. And so, um, and I kept, you know, continuing to write. And so it was really about me positioning myself to be in a place where I was teachable. Um, I wanted to just really learn the craft. I wanted to just really be the best author that I could be. And, um, and, and that really set me off where I could just really um, enjoy being published and enjoy the journey as I'm on. All right. So what would be, so, for you to get on this journey and to, and to rise up and, 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 and to turn your situation into, into confidence to become a writer, what would be your, a little piece of advice to give to someone who's going through, um, whether it's a, a hard time, whether it's a, um, a divorce themselves to keep them motivated and moving forward and being the best that they can be? What would you say to them? 
Yeah, I think one of the one of the things that they definitely have to know is that there is a purpose and a reason for all things, no matter how good or bad. There's a purpose for every trial and test that we go through. And we can take the um, we can pick the we can, you know, decide that, okay, I'm going to allow this to just really consume me and I'm not going to move. I'm not going to go forward. I'm going to, you know, just live in this depressed state and, and just not um, you know, move on with my life. Or we can take the approach that, you know what, um, I'm in this place, but I'm not going to let it overcome me. And if I want to write about my story, then I'm going to have to live through the trial. I'm going to have to live through all the pain to write my story so that other people can um, be survivors with it. Because a lot of times when I'm when we write nonfiction, um, it's not just for us. It's for readers. It's for other mm. people that may be going through it as well. And so when, when we have, when we can understand that as a writer, that we are not writing just for ourselves, we write because we have an audience that we want to reach, an audience that we want to share our stories with. And so whether you're writing fiction or nonfiction, there are readers who want to hear our stories. And so um, those that are, you know, wondering how to, you know, get through this, this tough season and, and stay and be, you know, motivated in it. You always have to know that there's something bigger than where you are right now. There's something more bigger than your own purpose. And so knowing that um, you're called to fulfill this here on the earth, but it's, it's bigger than you. And so when you can have that, approach and that motivation to just remember, you know, what I'm doing is bigger than me, then I think that that helps you to get through the day. Mm. So what was, what were your publishing goals when you, when you started writing, you started um, putting <laughs> these books together? What was the, what, was it a traditional goal? Was it, did you always know you wanted to be, um, so what, 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 what is your publishing status now? Are you an independent author? Or are you with vanity? Yes, I- Okay. Yes, I'm a, I'm an independent author now. When I wrote my first book, um, I had no idea about self publishing or anything like that. So I went with a vanity publisher, and um, and so I didn't have a bad experience with them at all. It it you know because I didn't know how to self, do go self publishing. I did that route, and so I don't regret that at all because it taught me a lot of things. But after I wrote my after I wrote my first book. I started to learn how to self-publish. And so from that point on, I began to just um, self-publish my own works. And um, and so with that, um, I've done nonfiction, Christian fiction and children's books. And, and um, it's been a, a wonderful journey to, to learn how to self-publish because the industry has changed so much. But yet um, we still have readers that we, you know, uh, we love immensely that, that read our books. Mm. So you're, you're also a pastor. Yes. How much pressure is it for you being a pastor and being a writer, um, especially with Christian fiction? You know what I mean? Because um, obviously that that core audience for that um there there are some expectations you know what I mean especially the stories mm-hmm. um so how much pressure is it when you're writing it just coming from a pastor's uh standpoint because it's a little different than just being a faithful person who's writing Christian <laughs> fiction and being that you know what I mean and being at the top of the uh yeah I do <laughs> no I, I, I do I think you know when I first started writing it was a little bit it well I not a little bit it was very challenging for me because mm. um I being married to a, a pastor and and being in that role you have people have so much high expectation of you and that they, you know, put you on this pedestal that, you know, you're not supposed to have your, your own struggles and fights and battles in life. You know, you're supposed to just be there to minister and preach and, you know, and pray for other people. And so when I got divorced and then I started writing, I had to really think about, um, you know, 
I, I, there was shame there. There was guilt there. And those were emotions that I really had to deal with, you know, because, um, when you're in such a position like that and you go through a divorce, you, you, you know, you kind of numb for me, I was just kind of like, wow, this is life. This is the lot that I've been, you know, given and I have to deal with it. And then when I began to write, I realized that, you know, especially when it was my own story and a lot of it has to, had to do with, you know, uh, my relationship, um, with my ex and, and ministry and all of that. Um, I once again was in the limelight, you know, and mm -hmm. I, you know, I was put right back out there and now I'm telling people about my divorce. I'm telling people about my battles. I'm telling people about, you know, wanting to end my own life and, and just say, forget it, you know? So I'm, I, I put myself out there, but I knew that I had to. I, I felt that I had a call, um, not just on my life to, you know, minister, but I had a, a call in my life to share my story. And so that's what I did. And so um, it took um, some fortitude and some will to get out there. But once I wrote my first book, everything else um, the journey, it, it didn't matter, you know, so much about me being a pastor. Um, I'm real um, careful what I write. Um, I write, um, I wrote my, my, you know, my Christian fiction novel, Secret Places Revealed, but it's clean. You know, there's, you know, no cussing or no sex in there or anything, of, anything like that. It's, it's for pure enjoyment. And so, um, so I'm real careful as to what I write because I, I want my audience and my readers to, you know, when they pick up my books, I, I want them to know that my character and my name um, is the same as what they're going to read. Mm. <laughs> so what about um because when because because the, the, there there's also the other side of being a a pastor and a Christ, christian fiction author mm -hmm. you're able to tell those positive stories about faith and oh, yeah. and and having belief in but on the, on the other side of it while you while christian writers are trying to promote that positivity there's also the other side of people who maybe maybe some who did grow up in the church maybe some who haven't mm -hmm. who are like marketing negative uh, mm -hmm. ne negativity and using mm -hmm. the church as uh, as that platform in their books um, yeah how, how, how does that make you feel as, as, as well because you know like every 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 place, everyone, no matter what setting, no matter what organization, no matter what group has their positive and negative. But for some reason, when it comes to religion, people always want to make it an extreme thing. You know what I mean? I do. Yeah. So how, how, how does that feel being a writer who does promote the positivity, the clean reads? Yeah. You know, um, I, I just really have to be true to who I am and my commitment to my faith and, and to the Lord in my writing. I do, um, I do understand that there are some people who have had bad experiences in the church and I can't deny that because that's right. their, that's their own truth, you know, and they're going to speak that. And so, um, it doesn't, make it any better when we see, uh, you know, reality shows <laughs> talking about the church, you know, yeah. green leaves <laughs> and all of them, you know, <laughs> that makes it even worse, <laughs> you know, so that doesn't make it any better. But still, the truth of the matter is, you know, the church is not perfect. You know, the church is, is full of people who are sinners, people who have problems, issues, people who are imperfect, people who are sick and need healing. And so this is, you know, who we who we have in the in the body. And and because we are, in, in, you know, not perfect people and we we have flaws and weaknesses and we have frailties and, and we have, you know, issues, that, you know, what anger, personalities, and all these things that make up who we are as people, we are going to, um, that's what we're going to reflect, you know, in, in, in the body. But yet in reflecting that one side, you know, for me, that wasn't my story, you know, mm. and, and even though I went through a divorce and it was a very difficult divorce, I didn't 
project what I experienced that one time, that that is all of the church because it's not. And so when I'm writing my story, when I'm writing nonfiction and even Christian fiction, um, the thing about Secret Places Revealed is it's not it's, it's not threatening to anyone that will read it. It's not preachy. It's not, you know, you go to church, you go to church. No, it's about, you know, normal, everyday people who have issues, you know. And right, so, I, right. I, you know, I think that depending on the the writer, their experience, that's what they're going to write, you know. And so for some writers who do, you know, um, put a mark on the church by their writings and whatnot. That's their, you know, that, that may have been their, that experience, but I can't write like that because that wasn't mine. Right. Exactly. So how, how has the reaction been from your family and um, obviously the church family when everyone found out you were like an author, you know what <laughs> I mean? Not just right, like you were published and you were out there. How, how, was, how was that reaction from everybody? Well, you know, when I wrote my first book, because it was about me <laughs> and my kids, <laughs> you know, with my kids, dad and the pastor of the church, it was a little bit like, oh, really? <laughs> you wrote a book, right. you know? <laughs> and, and, and so coming from, you know, that point of view, it was, you, you wrote a book really about your experience. And of course they, you know, they took it in a, in a bad way because they just thought I was going to, you know, I was saying something negative about, you know, their pastor and their brother and their dad and all of that, you know, so I, I had to, you know, deal with that. But, um, on the flip side, um, I had my family that were very supportive of me and even supportive of me when I was going through my divorce. And when I, you know, shared with them that I wanted, you know, to write my story, you know, they were, um, you know, applauding me to do it, you know, and so I did it. And um, I remember sharing with one of my girlfriends when I first started uh, writing, I said, you know what, I believe, you know, the Lord wants me to, you know, to write a book. And she just kind of chuckled, you know, has to say, yeah, Paula, and everybody say that, you know. And so anyways, uh, we talk about that even today. She said, yeah, I remember when you said you was going to write a book and look at you, you done wrote a lot of them. Now I said, yeah, don't laugh <laughs> at me now, huh? All right, so, all right. you know, so it was, you know, it was mixed. And so, um, but, you know, over the course of the years, I've been able to just move past all of that and just reach the, um, the readers who are open to, to my work. Mm. So you also wrote a children's book. Yeah. What, 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 what was the motivation behind that? Like what you hear so far? Make sure you never miss an episode of the Fiction Addiction Podcast by clicking the subscribe button now. This podcast is made possible by listeners like you. Thank you for your support. Now, back to the show. Okay, so uh, Princess Nevaeh, Lessons on Self-Discovery. Well, that book came about in uh, my my four-year-old granddaughter, Nevaeh. She's 12 now. Asked me, asked me if I would write a book with her name in it. Her, of course, her name is Nevea, and um, she knew that I was a writer, and she wanted me to write something about her, and so I did. So it was so funny because she um, only gave me a couple of days to get it done. <laughs> so <laughs> she, yeah, she asked me to write a book with her name in it, and I told her okay. And a couple of days later, she said, "Mimi, are you done with my book?" And I just chuckled. I said, "No, but." But Mimi's almost done with it. And um, so that's where my um, my children's book came about. It's it was her inspiration, her uh, request of her Mimi. And I was um, thrilled to be able to fill that request. And for a story in a book where, that has so much um, meaning behind it, obviously, it's your granddaughter is important. How are you able to find illustrators to to make an exactly how you wanted it? Because obviously you, you this this was special, you know what I mean? Especially because obviously you were going to present it to her and everyone else is going to see other children. So how were what was the journey like finding the illustrator for, for that book? Yeah, well, it was my um my first children's book, and so I the person that did my cover 
was also, um, you know, an illustrator. And so I just used the person that I was going going through. But because that, you know, was so many years ago and I see so many illustrators now and, and their, um, you know, their, their craft and their creativity. And I'm like, man, maybe I should redo my book, you know, because it, um, it's, it's so different. I mean, I wrote that book years ago. And, uh, and so now as, um, you know, I see other children, writers and illustrators and what they put out there is, is, is beautiful work. So, um, so yeah, I went with the person that I knew and, uh, and that's how I got it done. So this was the same person that does your, your, your book cover designs for your, uh, nonfiction and fiction books. Well, no, this was somebody that I had used years ago. The person that does my book cover designs now um, is someone different than did the the one for my children's book. Oh, OK. So so how did you link mm-hmm. up with that person for your for your, for your uh, nonfiction to fiction book? Um, I hooked up with this person because I had um, through other people, through other connections and whatnot. And when I started to. Um, self-publish, you know, I just put a call out there for, you know, designers, graphic artists and whatnot, and people started giving me referrals. And so I just started connecting with those referrals and looking to seeing what books they had, you know, had, um, you know, um, did and, and, you know, created covers that they had designed and whatnot. And so I just went that route. Mm -hmm. I went with people that, you know, were referred to me by other people because they trusted them. Right. So you are an award winning author. Explain, yes. explain that moment when you found out you won um, your award and, and how did it feel winning it? Simply amazing. <laughs> it was, <laughs> it was uh, both awards. The, the feelings were so different. Um, I won an award with Completely Whole from Reader's Favorite. And they, you know, asked all the authors to, you know, um, come down to Miami and um, be awarded and go through this, you know, big presentation, big oh, party really? and whatnot. And that was so, um, yeah. And that was so amazing because that was my my second book that I had written, but it was my first award. Mm. And so um, that was, that was so so amazing for me to had um one you know my book because it for an author it's it's just it's something it's i mean i can't even describe it in in words because it's just such a um an amazing feeling to be able to be awarded for your work you know and then um when i won my 2017 award for best inspirational romance for secret places revealed now that right there oh (laughs) 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 you talking about an emotional high because this is a fiction book and i went up against other great fiction writers who had been writing books for years, who had won the award for years. And when I heard about the, um, the contest, um, you know, I, I'm reading the rules and whatnot. And I said, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and do it. I'm going to try it, you know, and I did, and I'm glad that I did. And, and so I really had no idea that I was going to be, you know, I had won and, and I was watching Facebook and they was posting all the, um, you know, all the all the winners and stuff. And then I see somebody post Paulette Harper's Secret Places Revealed, you know, the winner of Best Inspirational Romance. Oh, my God. It was like, I mean, tears come to my eyes even now, you know, reflecting on that because I remember it so vividly because it was right when I had just bought my home. Um, I was in, you know, I I had a lot of things going on, but those two things, I had just bought my home and then I won that award. And that right there, that was just 
my biggest mo- one of my biggest moments was was being a, an award winning author for this fiction book because it was my very first novel. Mm. Yeah. Now you also are a bestseller. So <laughs> you got you got two <laughs> checks off that every writer, you know what I mean, strives to <laughs> strives to get those those two accomplishments. So how was that moment in um when did you find out? Like when did you know that you became a bestseller? Well well, when you, you know, when you are uploading your book on Amazon, you, you got to, you know, make sure that it's a strategy, you know, to, to get on um, bestseller lists, especially if you're brand new as a writer, you know, mm-hmm. uh, people that's been writing books for years and years, they have a following. So it's easy for them, you know, uh, because they got, they, they readers is just waiting for them to write books, you know? So, but when you are a, you know, first time writer, author, you know, two and three books under your belt, you still have have, you know, you still have some um, tr- um, some traction to, to move through, you know, to get readers and stuff. And so um, you um, pick the right categories, you do the strategies that you can, and you promote it as crazy as you can. <laughs> and so you watch, <laughs> you know, you watch once your book is released, you know, the, um, the traction that it's getting on Amazon, you know, and and if you strategize it very well and you get the right categories for your books, you know, the the possibilities are, are endless to become, you know, a bestseller. And it's it's amazing and it's a wonderful feeling. And um, I have I've written two anthologies and both of those anthologies um each one of them had seven authors or six authors in each book. And, you know, we became bestsellers and they were like, wow, you know, oh my God, I'm a bestseller. Yeah, you are, you know, but it takes work, but it's, it's, um, it's a happy feeling to be able to, um, have that, that, that honor too, and to, uh, to have social proof when I say I am award winner and also a bestseller. So how did you get into speaking? Um, through, um, speaking in my church. And so, uh, yeah. So when I, um, was, you know, a pastor and I would speak all the time, uh, women's conferences and events. And I had my own, uh, uh, ministry that I was speaking at as well. So I've been speaking for years. And so over the years, um, I've just been able to, um, expand my speaking engagements and my audience. So um, I still minister, I still, you know, speak to, you know, women's conferences and whatnot, but I also speak, for, you know, at workshops and I do, you know, uh, I do facilitations and, you know, I'm a facilitator and what and whatnot. So um, I've been speaking for, for a while now. So how, so how is that, uh, obviously um booking events for like book related events in terms of speaking how so how how easy are you able to do that well it's um it's work you know it is you have to make yourself really visible to people and connect with event planners who are doing you know events as well and always Um, looking for places where you can go and, you know, do vending or even be on a panel or some type of workshop. So when I see an event and they are, you know, just like in the planning stages and whatnot, you know, I'll make contact with the event planner and I'll ask them, you know, do you already have all your speakers? Mm. And if they don't, then I inquire about how I can be a speaker. And if they say that they do, then, you know, I ask them, okay, well, what about next year? What can I do to get on the list to find out if I can possibly speak for next year? So I, you know, I do what I can to get myself out there so that I can speak because that is what I love to do. And so wherever i you know, find a a place that I see or an event that's happening. I try to connect with the right person who, um, you know, makes the decisions to, you know, um, invite speakers to come. So what what got you into becoming a a book coach? 
Oh my goodness. I, one of the things, that's one of the things that I love. Well, after I wrote my first book, everybody, I didn't, I didn't realize that people thought you was an excer, uh, expert after that. <laughs> so, <laughs> so after I wrote my first book, I had people coming up to me saying, can you show me how to write a book? And I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> and so, um, <laughs> so I did. So I, um, I held my first a writer's workshop in the church that I was attending. And I think I probably had about 26 people in there. Mm. And yeah, yeah. And so I began to just share with them what my, what my journey was to become a, a published author and the steps that I needed to take and what I did to, you know, to get published and whatnot. And that was really the be- Excuse me. That was the beginning of it. It was um, probably around 2009 um, that I uh, 2009, 2010 that I did my first workshop and been you know doing it ever since. And so I do um, most of what I do now is one on one coaching and um, which. I find so gratifying Mm. because I'm helping authors who are at the beginning stages who really don't know the industry. They don't know how to write a book. They don't know the the right way to do it. And so they'll come to me and, you know, solicit my services and I'll be able to, you know, take them through the process one on one. And so they have me um, coaching them. Um, making sure that they're going to write their book right. And then I'm going to introduce them to people that they can trust who are going to edit their books right, who's going to give them a, a great book cover, who's going to do the great formatting for them and whatnot. And so, um, so yeah, most of what I do now is is, is one-on-one coaching. Mm. I still love workshops and, and I still, I'm still doing, you know, what, if, People ask me to do workshops and do and to facilitate. I still do that as well. But most of my clients are one on one. Mm. So you are the owner of right now, literary book tours. So um, break down that service for the (laughs) listeners. Yeah. So uh, right now, Virtual Book Tours is an online service to help promote authors. And um, I had a when I wrote my first two books, I went on a virtual book tour. I had no idea what it was. And when I remember when I when I first got published, I, I, I still have zeal, but it was crazy back then because I was like, I need to get my book out there, you know, so I was doing a lot of marketing, a lot of promoting and a lot of going to, you know, conferences and stuff. And so I did a virtual book tour through someone else and I began to see how powerful it was because she connected me with bloggers and radio shows Mm. and bloggers who were featuring me on their blogs. And so these blogs, they have, you know, thousands of visitors that come who want to read books, who want new content. And so the virtual book tour is um, on the same concept of, you know, Instead of traveling and going from city to city, you're really literally just going online from blog to blog. And so when they feature authors on their blogs, they're being featured either a author spotlight, author interview, a um, a book spotlight, excerpts on uh, about their book, a trailer, a video. And, um, you know, the uh, synopsis of their book, they can run a contest, you know, for their book as well. Um, And so they can also do guest posts and writing articles as well. So it is a great opportunity for any author who's looking for a maximum amount of exposure in the quickest amount of time, Mm. because you're talking about, you know, 15 to 25, 30 bloggers who are promoting you daily for, you know, a week or two or however long you want to do your tour. These bloggers are promoting your book. And then they have these visitors coming there and checking you out and you have your book links on there as well. And so um, a lot of the bloggers will 
post also and share to their friends on Twitter and Facebook. And so their friends on Twitter and Facebook are sharing as well. So it's so much exposure for the author and it gets them the visibility they need um, in this industry. And then um, I was able to also go on some radio interviews, you know, podcasts like I'm doing right now. And so I was, um, I'm, you know, able to connect them with um, radio show hosts that will have the authors on and feature them um, as well. So um, a virtual book tour is for anyone who has a book. It doesn't matter how many years your book has been out there, if it's current, you know, just published or ready to be released. Um, you should think about adding a virtual book tour to your marketing plan. So um, how would these authors like sign up for the tours, like uh, br break down the process of getting in contact with you in terms of getting a tour set up? Yeah, so they can go to my website, which is WNLBookTours.com. They can also connect with me on Facebook. It's under um, Pastor Paulette Harper. I'm on Twitter as well under Paulette Harper. But the best way is to go to actual, actually go to my website, WNL Book Tours, and they can check out all of my packages that I have. I have about six uh, different packages for authors. They can check out the packages and see what um, each uh, package um, entails and what they would receive. Um, they pick that package and then it's, it's about, you know, booking a tour. And then once um, they schedule a tour, then I make connection with them as far as the dates and stuff. Mm. So one of the things I noticed, um, especially on your your novel, uh, Secret Places Revealed, is you had editorial reviews. So um, break down the process of how you got those. I'm going to do a two part with this. So break down the process of how of of getting the editorial reviews for authors who don't know about them and also explain the importance of having getting editorial reviews. Yeah, I'm glad you asked that because um, reviews are so important. With um, Secret Places Revealed, what I did was I sent out a email to all the people that I thought could possibly give me a review before my book got published. And what I did was I I asked them if they would read my book, do me give me a review, and then I would add them in my book as a thank you. And that's what I did. So the first, you know, page or two in my book, it is praises for secret places revealed. And those are all some of some of the reviews that I got. And so um, what I did was I sent them, you know, my a copy of my uh, my book in a PDF form and told them I needed them to on the day that my book was released. I needed them to go on Amazon and post the, the book review. And then for it to be inside my book, of course, they had to, you know, give me the um, the review, you know, prior to so that I can include it in my uh, with my my format or whatnot. But um, but yeah, that's how I got, you know, the reviews inside of my book. So you really have to as a as an author, you have to, you know, seek people out that um, you believe that's going to be able to write you a, re a review, get it to you in time if you're going to put it inside your book, but also when your book releases, that they are able to go on Amazon the day your book is released to uh, post those reviews. And reviews are so important because the reviews really do tell other readers how good your book is. They really do help you create the buzz for your book. And they also, <laughs> if your book is, is your, if your book is full of errors, if you've made a lot of mistakes, it, all those things, reviewers will tell you that as well. And so uh, you want to make sure that your book um, as a self-published uh, author and one who teaches and coaches self-publishing, I always tell my clients, you know, just because you self-publish, it don't you don't have to look like it. <laughs> 
So reviews are reviews are very important. And, you know, when when, you know, you have your book out there and you only have a couple of reviews, you you just really should ask, start asking people, can you do a review? You know, give them, you know, a copy of, of the book, a PDF, you know, and, and allow them to review the book. But also, you know, make make sure that they are going to be uh, committed to putting and posting their review on Amazon or Barnes and Noble or whoever you want them to wherever you want them to post it. All right, now let's break down this novel, Secret Places Revealed. So this story, I'm going to break it down the synopsis real quick. Uh, single and very content real estate developer Aaron Blackman is determined not to become involved in another relationship. He's experienced enough drama to last a lifetime. The only thing garnering his attention now is growing business. And his, he plans to keep it that way. Then Simone Heron waltzes into his life, beautiful and confident, fighting to keep his promise to himself to remain single. He soon discovers that when it comes to love, some promises must be broken. So let's break down uh, Secret Places Reveal, Simone and Aaron. What was the motivation behind this story, telling this story? Yeah, um, when I was writing Completely Whole, of course, at this moment, I've been introduced to fiction authors. And so I've been reading a lot of fiction novels, a lot of romance stories and whatnot. And and I, I got the, the the nudge to write a fiction book. And and I'm like, I don't I don't even know where to begin writing a <laughs> fiction story because I had all, I had just been writing nonfiction. And so um I started thinking about what kind of story I would want to be in. What kind of storyline I would want to convey to people, you know, and so Simone and Aaron came about just really thinking about these two individuals and really my own, you know, a lot of what she had gone through, you know, I've experienced. And then um, creating Aaron to be this, you know, this fabulous looking brother who is very successful in what he's what he does he is um you know very smart and brilliant in what he does and he's a you know um he's he he knows his 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 stuff you know he's a, a real estate developer but one of the problems that he had was in with relationships you know and so um i wanted to bring these characters together who really wasn't at a place in their lives that they were looking for love. Simone was um, coming from New York. Her family was in the Bay Area. And so the story uh, centers around the San Francisco Bay Area. And there is a lot of hot spots in San Francisco and in the Bay Area that's in my book. And so Simone was... um, leaving New York, transitioning here to the Bay Area. And of course, Aaron is already here. And so um, putting them together where he had a need, she uh, wanted, didn't really necessarily need to work because she was pretty set financially, but because she was still emotionally um, going through what she was going through, she wanted to work to try to ease her mind and, you know, fill, you know, fill these, some of the voids and that she had. So um, it's really a story about Two ordinary people not wanting to fall in love, but can't resist it because it's really it really was ordained for them to find a, fall in love, but also to realize that both of them had secrets that, you know, for her, her friend knew about, but for Aaron, nobody knew about. And they had to be vulnerable in order for them to have a relationship with one another, that meant that they had to be open Mm. and they had to share those moments of vulnerability. They had to share those moments of, of being exposed. They had to share those secrets because um, they couldn't be in a relationship with one another and not trust each other a hundred percent with all their baggage that they brought into it. 
Now, one of the things I noticed uh, at the point of view, you wrote you wrote the, the story in third person point of view. A lot of writers uh, say they prefer first person because they can get more of a connection with um, the characters um, they write. But even when you start off the book, it being a third, there was such a strong connection with Simone, you know what I mean, as a reader. Mm. And like you just felt it from the first page, from the first chapter, you mm. felt it, it felt like I felt what she was going through. You know what I mean? When you, mm, when yeah, you talk nice. about what she's been through and then and then and, and coping with that at that at that moment and 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 dealing with it, yeah. not to give away uh, uh, too much of the book, but, but, but <laughs> coping with it. How were you able to do that? Um in your opinion, from writing in third person and still able to to harness that emotion of of, of her character. Yeah. Um well I had to I I had been in New York, so I knew a little bit about New York. And then um I probably had about four editors helping me with this book. Because of course this is my first novel. And I don't I don't really know a whole lot about being uh, show, don't tell, <laughs> you know. <laughs> and so I had to no, really, I really I had to learn how to be a writer, a fiction writer. I had to learn. And so um, I had some great editors that helped me write this book. You know, they they polish it for me. They help me with the the whole content, the development of the story and whatnot. And so um, I learned how to dive into who she was and what she was feeling. I had to bring myself to be Simone as a fiction writer. um, You know, you have to be you have to have the dialogue. You have to have the, the the heart of each character that you're conveying and whatnot. And you literally have to allow the characters to speak to you and allow them to really move the story for you. And I learned how to do that. And so when you for me, when I'm when I started writing this story, I thought about, OK, this Simone has to be in this. There has to be a reason that she's all um, her emotions are all over the place. And so I had to create um, a, 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 a I had to create a problem for her that made her feel a certain way. And then how was she going to get through those problems? And that was one of the things she had to address. And that was her leaving and whatnot. So, yeah. And one of the, uh, the other things I also liked about the story was um, you do have, you did make Aaron a successful black man. You know what I mean? Um, that's something yeah. that's starting to be uh, a new trend, a new positive trend in, 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 in books now. So how important was that, having having him be successful, not the typical, you know, <laughs> stereotypical mm-hmm. uh Yes. That, that <laughs> Book. Black men usually get in books. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, that's so important to me because um I appreciate the black men and what they bring to relationships, communities, businesses and whatnot. And so I wanted Aaron to be a very successful man because one I just wanted readers to know that this brother had it together, mm. you know, and that he he was articulate. He was fine. He had his, you know, his job, his home, his car, but he also had an issue, some issues, you know. And so um, I wanted, you know, the readers to see that this brother had it together, you know, and so we could um, look up. Because there are some some brothers that got their stuff together, you know. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, we have enough negative stuff in the world and on television and media that put, you know, put the men down. And I don't want to be one of the writers that contribute to that narrative. Mm. And so I wanted to write something that was more positive for people to read, you know. And so um, 
The, uh, one of the great things about writing this book was the um, the the cover of my book, the the male cover on my book. I met him on Facebook and it was amazing to meet the model. Oh, the because actual at the model moment when my book. Yeah, the oh. actual model, right. <laughs> so when my um designer had created the cover, a friend of mine posted the cover on Facebook and somehow the model, his name is AC Brown. Um, he got tagged in it some kind of way. And so he, I started to see all the, all these, you know, the feeds going through and all these comments about, you know, the, my, my book cover and whatnot. And so then I go to his page and I'm like, oh my God, this is the guy on my book cover. You know, it was so amazing, <laughs> <crazy>. you know? <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. It was really crazy. And so I interjected in one of his comments and one of his conversations with one of his, you know, um, friends on Facebook, I said, uh, I am the writer, Paulette Harper of, of Secret Places Revealed. And he said, hey, I'm AC Brown. I'm the male model on your cover. And I'm like, <laughs> OMG. <laughs> it was it was just off the charts. And then from that point on, I got to interview him. Oh, I wow. got to interview. Yeah, I got to interview him. And so there's a lot of AC Brown in my book with Aaron, a lot of his character. Um, when I interviewed AC, I would ask him, do you have, you know, ear pierce? Is your ear pierce? Because my character, I love a man who has an ear, a ear pierce. And so I said, he has an ear pierce. Do you have, you know, um, tattoos? He said, no, I don't have no tattoos. I said, okay, he going to have, he going to be tatted up a little bit, you know? <laughs> and so he, he would, he would share things with me about things he would say, some of his sayings and whatnot. And, and, you know, the car that he wanted to drive and whatnot. And so I put those things in my book because meeting him made his character come more alive to me. Mm. Yeah, it was it was amazing. And so we've been friends ever since then. And it's it's just when I saw that on Facebook, I'm like, oh, my God, I, I met the, the, the model. Right. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So this novel, um, it can it's it's good enough to be in any any genre. Um, you know what I mean? So like, mm -hmm. you could have stuck this in any, any drama, but how important was it to incorporate, um, faith, um, into the story? Yeah, I wanted to incorporate faith in the story because that's, you know, that's, that's my foundation. Mm -hmm. And, um, I wanted to present some characters who, even though they, um, that they had, they was real. They was n normal people, just like you and I. They had their issues, but they always they they um, they had a thriving business, thriving businesses. They were very prosperous. They were very, um, uh, you know, they they were very successful in their own right. And I wanted to write a story that they also had struggles. And that their struggles had to be um, rectified through their faith, through their commitment. And um, and so I wanted the readers to know that, you know what, we can we can, you know, have everything we want in life. We can be successful, but there's always something in our lives that we need help from the Lord with. And so I wanted to interject that. And so I wanted my readers to realize that no matter, you know, what happens in life, how successful we are, that um, there's always some kind of, you know, struggle, battle. Uh, there's always something something that we need uh, fixed in us. And so knowing that I can write that and be free about it and that I could, you know, post scriptures in there and stuff and that people can read it and, and kind of reflect on their own lives as they're reading the story. Hmm. Something just clicked. In my head. <laughs> Something you said earlier, four, four editors. Yeah, I did. Yeah, I did. 
because um, I, <laughs> well, you have, well, because this was my first, you know, my first fiction book, um, I had a couple people, you know, content developers mm-hmm. and then, you know, my proofreaders. And right. so I wanted to, you know, I really wanted to make sure that my, I'm not saying that my book is perfect, you know, but I'm saying it's, it's pretty close to it. Right, right. Yeah, you and sure so, of it. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I made sure of it. And so I put the money out there for it because I wanted my book not to. I didn't want readers getting on on Amazon talking about, oh, my God, her book is full of errors. Oh, no, no. And so. (laughs) So, yeah, I did. I had quite a few eyes looking through my book because I wanted to make sure I caught as much as I needed to catch. And I covered all of the ground that I needed to cover to make sure that my book was, um, was the best it could be. Right. So how, how, how did you know when it was done? Cause obviously I know you didn't set out with a set number saying, Oh, I'm gonna get four editors, but obviously. No, I process. didn't. <laughs> uh, yeah. So how was that process of yeah. knowing exactly when, okay, now I know this is ready. Yeah. So, you know, once I got done with the developmental editor and uh, went through, you know, those stages, then, you know, passing it on to uh, my proofreader and she went through it. And then I let somebody else read it, you know, and, and catch whatever needed to be caught if there was anything. So really, it was after you know, the, the content was developed, the book was developed and that piece, because the first step, that's the, that's the core of your book. That's where you're going to get all your red lines. That's where you're going to get this thing, right. This ain't right. You know, all of that. So once that process was done and, um, and then I could move on to the, um, the proofreader, I knew that then, you know, I'm on my way. Mm. So what's one piece of advice you will give uh, to an aspiring writer? One of the advice that I would give is to one, a couple things. Learn the industry. Don't just say you want to be an author and just put a book out there. And then also to be prepared to spend some money editing, marketing, publishing your book. One of the things that I have found in my coaching is that people are so anxious to become authors, they they don't realize the cost to be an author. Mm. And, you know, it, it costs money to edit your book. It costs money to get a great cover. It costs money to get your book formatted correctly. And then you got you have to market it. So I would really encourage aspiring authors to learn the industry, find out what it takes and how much it, it may possibly cost to get a book published. And then you save up your money to do it right. Um, I've heard so many stories where authors have written a book and they don't have any money to market it. And that's that's sad, you know, and so just make sure that you 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 get your coins that you need to, you know, get your book published and market it. So what's next for Paulette Harbor? Oh, I'm glad you asked. (laughs) I am actually (laughs) I'm actually going to be launching an online school Mm. called Storytellers Storytellers Academy, How to Write, Publish and Market Your Nonfiction Book. It is going to be um, launched on March the 23rd. And I'm going to be um, using uh, ClickFunnels as my platform for membership. I'm so excited to be able to do that because I do quite a bit of one-on-one coaching and I wanted to put my book as a, I mean, put my services, uh, offer my services as a course so that other people all over the world can now experience 
experience being authors, uh, you know, going through the process, the proven strategies that I've used and how I coach one on one is going to be compiled in my membership course for those that want to write, publish and market their own inspirational nonfiction self-help transformational stories. Mm. Now, where can everybody reach out to you, find your work, and check out your books? Yeah, um, they can. My website is uh, under construction right now, but they can find me on Facebook. They can also go to Amazon and look for me under Paulette Harper. If they, um, they could also email me as well, Paulette at Paulette Harper. Dot com, And um, through that, um, I'm also offering, if they find me on Facebook, I'm also offering a free um, ebook on how to write, publish, and market your nonfiction, um, your nonfiction book as well. So that is available. And it's also available to all your readers, I mean, all your listeners as well. If they connect with me, I'll be glad to um, give them a free ebook on how to write, publish, and market their nonfiction book. Mm, that's amazing. That's that's definitely, definitely dope, especially with all the, the tips you gave today. So we um just want to thank you. Just thank you for sharing your story and thank you for the tips and the advice you, you gave in the interview. We appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. I appreciate you and the opportunity to be on to share with all of your uh, all of your listeners. Thanks again. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that was Paulette Harper. Thank you for joining us on the Fiction Addiction Podcast. Make sure you visit fictionaddictionpodcast.com for links on everything we talked about today, as well as awesome resources, additional tips, and fiction addiction merchandise.